Okay, let's do some review of electron configurations. Electron configurations are the ways that electrons choose to arrange themselves in the orbitals of atoms. There are rules that must be followed when filling the orbitals. These rules simply show how the electrons choose to fill to keep their arrangement most stable. In an electron configuration, the number represents the energy level, the letter, in this case S, represents the sublevel, and the superscript number, in this case 2, represents the number of electrons that are filling that sublevel. We can use the SPDF blocks on the periodic table to help us see where the electrons are filling and in what order they will fill. The d orbitals fill up after previous s energy levels. So the first d is the 3d, even though it is in the fourth row. f orbitals will start filling at 4f in the fourth energy level. All electron configurations can be written simply in terms of a noble gas. This is called the shortcut method. In the shortcut method, we use the previous noble gas, we place it in brackets to represent all the electrons up to that point. Then we simply add the additional electrons to give us the element in question. For example, germanium is argon plus the additional 4s2, 3d10, and 4p2 electrons. The off-bow principle states that electrons enter the lowest energy levels first. This can cause some difficulties because of the overlap of orbitals of different energies. We would expect electrons to enter the 1s, then the 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, and so on. But in fact, because of electron repulsions, they don't choose to do that. Electron repulsions actually cause the 4s electrons to fill before the 3d, because it's easier for electrons to enter the smaller 4s orbital even though it is further away. So they will fill the 4s, then come back and finish filling the 3d. They do this to cause a stable arrangement of electrons. Orbital diagrams show us in which orbitals the electrons are actually entering in that sublevel. For example, the px has two electrons, the py has two, but the pz only has one electron. We will later use orbital diagrams to tell us where electrons are paired and unpaired for bonding. The Pauli exclusion principle says that at most there are two electrons in any orbital and they're going to be in there with opposite spins. This allows them to reduce their repulsions. Hund's rule states that when electrons occupy orbitals of equal energy, they won't pair up until they have to. Obviously, they would prefer to stay as far away as possible, so they will fill up orbitals separately and then pair up only when they have to. The electrons will fill each orbital separately before pairing up. They choose to stay as far away from each other to avoid repulsion. So you would fill the px with one electron, the py, then the pz, before going back and filling the px again with an additional electron. That electron spin would have to be opposite, shown by an upside down arrow. This shows the electron configuration and the orbital diagram for oxygen. You can see that the orbital diagram gives a little more information about where those four electrons are located and what their spins are. The noble gases are the most stable and unreactive elements known. Their stability is due to their electron configuration. They have full S and P orbitals for eight electrons in their outer orbital. The alkali metals have one electron in their outer valence shell. They will choose to lose this electron in order to fall back to a full S and P orbital of a noble gas. The alkaline earth metals with their two valence electrons will choose to lose these two electrons to fall back to a full electron configuration of a noble gas. 
Boron's group, with its three outer electrons, two in the S and one in the P, will still choose to lose these three electrons and fall back to a noble gas arrangement. Once you get to Carbon's group with four valence electrons, the option is to either lose those four or gain four more to fill the remaining orbitals. These elements will do either or both at given times. Nitrogen group with five electrons in the valence shell will choose to fill that remaining shell with three additional electrons. That's easier than losing the five valence electrons that they currently have. Oxygen's group will gain two electrons to fill their valence shell. The noble gases are only one electron shy of being a full S and P. They will certainly gain this electron easily to have the noble gas electron configuration. The reason that the noble gases don't react is because their valence electron orbitals are filled with S and P, six in the S, two in the P, for eight valence electrons. This is a particularly stable arrangement of electrons. All other elements try to achieve this.